Believe it or not, but I've owned every single PlayStation since the very first PlayStation 1 original. What's going on guys? My name's David Tomich and welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about the brand new PlayStation 5, which has been semi-released by Sony. We've heard many, many rumors leading up to it, but we've also now been given a glimpse of what it looks like, what it's capable of, and what kind of games we'll be expecting. Believe it or not, but I have owned every single PlayStation since the very first PlayStation 1. I remember getting it a day after school, and my parents brought it home, and I had Spyro the Dragon and Croc set up, and it was one of the best days of my life. So when the PS5 came out, it was something to be excited about as a fully grown adult. So what PlayStation has come out and stated is that the official device will be released towards the end of this year, anywhere between October and December, with a more likely modest price of 500 USD. So if that's anything to go off by and all the rumors of the pricing, which is 500 USD, my stab in the dark would be the simple fact that in Australia, it's gonna cost probably just under $1,000. The last PlayStation that came out was very, very close to it on launch. And when we go back to the PS3, it was 750 or 650 or something like that off the top of my head. It was very expensive. So going into the PS5, that's capable of doing absolutely everything at a flagship premium level. It's more than likely gonna be priced right up there at the $1,000 mark. So let's start by talking about the actual design of the PS5. And it is definitely something that is striking. It is an all white with a blue neon inside and it's very futuristic. When you first see it and you see the two versions, you start thinking, why is there two versions? But it makes sense very quickly when the two logos appear. We're gonna have the digital version only and the one with the disk drive. So the one with the disk drive will obviously allow you to backdate all your PS4 disk games and use any new PS5 games. Whereas the digital version I'm unsure how that's going to backdate and let you use any previous games that you've used, but they might be able to integrate some sort of software trans cross compatibility. I don't really know. It'll be a very interesting thing to see if people decide to go with the digital only version because they want to go digital from here on in, or if they're going to stick to the hardware version with the CD drive in it because they want to be able to play their old PS4 games while a ton of new games get released slowly as they always do on the PlayStation Network. Personally, I'm a huge fan of the design. I think it's very striking, beautiful white and sleek, very minimalistic, and it somewhat reminds me of architecture in Dubai. If you've ever been to Dubai, if you've ever seen any pictures, you could easily slot this tower right into the skyline and nobody would be none the wiser. The one thing that we haven't really been told by Sony is what this device is gonna cater for. Yes, we know it's a state-of-the-art AMD chip with an 825 gigabyte SSD custom-built hard drive in it. Now, we know also the fact that the hard drive is custom-built for the specific fact that it's got ray tracing in it and it's gonna need to bump out that information really, really quickly in order to be able to use this ray tracing features inside it. But what we haven't been told is, are they gonna focus on the gaming only experience or are they gonna start focusing on the Sony network as a whole? When we think about Sony, some of us think about the PlayStation, some of us think about the cinema and the cinematography that they do. So Sony as a franchise has done billions of dollars worth of things over the years. So if Sony wanted to, for example, they could begin competing with Netflix and Disney Plus and all those other streaming platforms and all of a sudden bring out their own Sony platform or even provide it free of charge to PlayStation 5 users. Why would this benefit somebody? Well, it's very simple actually. If you open up a new library to a whole new customer base, people who are buying PlayStation 5s aren't just hardcore gamers anymore. They're now families who wanna watch movies. They're young couples who don't wanna pay for Netflix, but they also want a good 4K player and they wanna play games sometimes. So all of a sudden, it isn't just that dedicated market, but it is almost everybody might be looking at the PS5 and what it could and can't do. So I think as more information gets released about the PS5 and the more we learn about it, it'll be very interesting to see what direction Sony goes into. Are they gonna be going into 
oh, yep, we're a gaming focused, it's only gonna be about gaming, and we're gonna focus on that 4K, potentially 8K cross compatibility in the future, really focusing heavily on the frame per second going from what we're all very much used to of 30 frames a second now and hopefully bumping it up to 120 frames a second as we're starting to see in mobile devices, laptops and all other technology platforms now in 2020. So as we move into 2021 very rapidly and as the PS5 comes out towards the end of 2020, these games hopefully in 2021 will be coming out at 120 frames per second. This will become a very different experience from the PS4 that we all got so used to playing that 30 frames a second. If you've been able and lucky enough to experience 120 frames a second on any device, be it the S20, be it a laptop, be it a desktop, then you'll know there is a huge difference. Playing fast paced games at 120 frames a second, something like Call of Duty, then that is something that will really revolutionize the gaming experience. Now, if you end up pairing the PS5 with the Philips Hue lighting that I talked about in one of my last videos, you can all of a sudden transform your entire room into this gaming epicenter. You could have the lights changing and be really immersed into this technology and into the PS5 experience. Anyway, that's all we really know about the PS5 so far, guys. It is a limited amount of information, but it is revealed. We know what it's gonna look like. We know the 20 odd games that are gonna come out with the release. We know the accessories and we pretty much know what we're in for from the launch. The only thing we don't know is the software and the price. What's it gonna be running? How's it gonna be running those games? How's the digital only version gonna be cross compatible, backwards compatible? We don't know, but hopefully we'll find out very, very soon as PlayStation continues to release information. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that subscribe button 2020 style. And as always, I'll see you next Monday.